Hello and welcome back in an Alan Wake and let's get into it. Oof. Here we'll go meet a kidnapper now. Oh here we will not do anything. Little by Don't little without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. Even during daytime, I was being stalked. The bridge must have collapsed only moments after I'd crossed it. Why is that bridge broken? That bridge just... I mean, it's probably not just, it probably it collapsed long ago. Or a while ago. Yeah. I think those nightmares or shit cannot be... I mean, it probably can attack us at morning too, but probably on... I mean, in somewhere that doesn't have light. Probably. KBF-FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now. Because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Thank you. I hope I hope he's talking to me. Godspeed and uh, he's not. I mean, he doesn't think who I am. It who I was. What was I was doing? I mean, I'm just trying to find my wife. Just help me get my wife back, okay? The whole time, I mean, the whole uh, police station is after me. Not only for this session, but FBI too. Holy Christ. Just help me here, okay? Just help me here. I'm just trying to find my wife, goddamn. And Lois, she's not that cool girl, man. I hope she recovers.
Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish, even? <laughs> there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything. But what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she, I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but... Well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Yeah, understandable. I kind of agree with Doc. I mean, isn't it sad <laughs> that your life have only one uh, soulmate? I mean, imagine this. You have like a thousand of people and for some reason, there's only one for you. I mean, let's talk about when you are like, you know, oh, this person is for me, definitely. And then you like broke up with them or they didn't interest in you and then, and then you go seek out uh, other person because you move on and then you'll be like, oh, this person is for me again. I mean, that isn't just like, that, that's like not a soulmate, I think. Because you're just saying, oh, this one is for me again and again and again and again because you think this one is for you. But after you searching for a while, and you say this one is for you for the last time because you are now married with them and live a ha happy life or not, and then you're just forgetting other people, and then you say this is your soulmate. But why are you saying this so this one uh, this person is your soulmate? You have been past like I was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. So thinking like, you know, you have been uh, uh, missing with like four or five people, but then the six is your last stop, and then you're saying this person is your soulmate, but you forgot that you have met one to five people before, and then you always say that, oh, this is my soulmate. You know what I mean? It's kind of, I don't know, perspective, I guess. For Mark. Spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Maude hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look at the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Maude had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. My travel is particularly dangerous. That's concerning. White Fall Coal Mine Museum. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. 
The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. Oh my god, so that's what happened. That boy's doing more than drinking. Uh, uh, doing more drinking than thinking. How do you know what you're doing? Sala, he's got a signal in his eyes. You take my word for it, he won't work for a reason, and it's not for anything good. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Collapse of flood. The two miners lost their life in calamity. Oof, poor them. And we didn't get trapped in the cave or in the mine. The worst nightmare. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Oh, what's up with that man? Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello! Ah! I'm gonna kill him! I had to get to Mirror Peak. Yep, I should have stayed here. Maybe closer than ever before. Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse.
I wonder if Jessie is here, how she gonna uh, like blend out. Will she let? What will she cleanse? I mean, oh my god. Maybe she will cleanse the type wither? Uh, uh, Alan. Hades? Maybe? Manor Skip? But then there's like 30 or 20 of them. Or 50, I don't know. But there's a lot. How is she gonna cleanse all of it? I didn't know that there is another one. God damn. the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. It is so chaotic. God
Why do they have to targeting me anyway? Is it just because I'm the white? Whoa. Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. There was no way the flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. about the other way. I'll start with that. I know that I don't have any achievement about the uh, uh, manuscript, but I still want to collect them as much as I can. So... Oh, hello. So I can understand about objects.
I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Uh, how does he gonna prove that it's fake? I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Come shotgun. Sounds nice.
I love when they line up like that and I have shotgun. So satisfying. The dark presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? I suppose so. The graveyard shift may cause cancer. Let's look up the wheel. How to wheel up? Nothing much. You <laughs> can't see anything, actually. The place was dead. A ghost town. Had been for decades, maybe a century. Doesn't seem like they have anything. Mm. Oh, man, clip. Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself, angry at Alice, angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. You know, it's kind of weird that when we are in this uh, situation, or uh, in this uh, kind of thing, sometimes you just think out of something that somehow your plan is work out. I thought it's uh, work out not good or uh, not that bad but still somehow you just pop light out of that darkness kind of weird sometimes life I guess
feel like it's going stronger and stronger every time that I meet him. Outside of riding is a struggle. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet, and a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake, using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of the lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things from my story. They ring true. They fit. have enough ammo. Yeah, let me take it instead. You know, it sounds like I scream sometimes. Like a woman screaming. What do you want from me? Talk to me. God damn it. The kidnapper had sent me a text. The message was full of spelling errors and insults. It was telling me to hurry up.
Why did the camera suddenly close up? What's up with that? Is it morning already or is it just part of the book? Behind the closed doors and curtains of his grimy room at the Majestic, the local motel, Nightingale could feel the locals' eyes on him, the unrelenting pressure of their judgment. He forced it out of his mind. For all he knew, they could all be under Wake's spell already. You do what you have to do to get the job done. He took comfort from the bottle in his hand. Please, he thought. Just let me get through this. I mean, he literally did something stupid. Like, he doesn't even know why Wake is running away. He doesn't even know what Wake's done. He's just all uh, assuming. There's no even a test yet or proof or anything. And he just start blasting at uh, two civilians already. Two CVs. I'd have to that make my way up good. this mine shaft in order to go on. Maybe the machinery could help me with that.
Yeah, they got. Claws, come. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so beautiful.
Okay, it doesn't penetrate. But... Maud had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no sign of the wakes. It was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake. It made no sense. They must have taken a wrong turn. But there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated, Maud stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. I would prefer push or pull and not kick. That's gonna destroy my kneecaps. <laughs> not good. You talk to me on TV, Tom Tom. Tom 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 I miss you Tom. You were this TV Tom. C N T C Tom Sagan. Think. Oh wait, is uh, the diesel Tom? I think. Not sure, I think.
I just feel like shooting at the body and shooting at the head, it's not different. It's really the same thing. When can I, I could see spot? Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. I was close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in her place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Wait! Is that you? Wait! Hey, I'm here! I'm coming! No! Get away! Sorry! Please, it's late! The boss didn't know who he was messing with! I, I didn't know! I swear, I didn't know! We don't have his wife! We don't know where she is! She's probably drowned! We just said we had her to make a play ball, you see? You see? To get him writing for us! Please! Please! Oh. I'm sorry! Please don't hurt me! Oh. What the hell is happening there? I think it must be that woman. The dark woman. With dress. Looks like she's going to a funeral. Must be her. End of episode three. Okay, man. I hope you enjoyed this episode of oh Alan Wake. The beautiful final character. Like so my name is No Frosty, and today I am out. Good episode. Lovely. With a my daddy did a jig with a drunk midwife. Uh, who's that yonder hole in flames? Dragon behind. Sack of chains. Who's that a young doll in flames? Well, jumped the devil and he staked his claim on me.